when we first introduced vectors, one of the first questions that we asked ourselves were, what were the natural algebraic operations of vectors? And in fact, we had two. One of them was scalar multiplication, where you took every different component of the vector and multiplied it, applied it by a scalar. And that geometrically corresponded by taking a vector and stretching its length by that scalar. And we also had vector addition, where we took the sum of two vectors was added component-wise. The first two components added together and the second two components added together and so on. And that geometrically this corresponded to sort of a tip-to-tail addition to vectors. Well, now we've introduced the idea of matrices. And we defined the matrix vector multiplication, but I want to know what other operations can we do on matrices? So for example, consider this matrix that I have here, and I've written it in its completely generic form with AIJ notation. I think that one such natural operation is going to be a scalar multiplication, not on vectors, but a scalar multiplication on matrices. And the idea here is that I'm going to take a constant C. Now, how should I define it where I put colon equal sign to say I'm defining the thing on the left by the thing on the right? I think a natural way to do it is to take the coefficient c and multiply it in front of every single entry. So if I just copy and paste the matrix that we had here, I can come along and I can add in a bunch of c's here and here and here and here and everywhere. So in other words, this scalar multiplication, and note that it's scalar multiplication of matrices now, is going to work in this way. By the way, this is a quite a natural operation. You can imagine that a matrix is thought of as a transformation and that what C times this matrix does is it, it takes the transformation that does whatever else the transformation did. Maybe it rotated, maybe it stretched, maybe it sheared. It takes whatever it did and then the resulting vectors, it multiplies and stretches them by the scalar C. So it's a very natural operation to consider. Okay, what else can we do? Well, if we've got a scalar multiplication, you can probably imagine that we also have a matrix addition. And to illustrate this particular point, I'm going to give actually concrete matrices here. So this is for matrix addition. And I'm going to give some matrices. How about this one? One, two, three, four, five, six. And I have to add some other matrix. How about, oh, I don't know, one, 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 one. Doesn't really matter. And I want to have a, a definition of how to add these two things up. Now, the natural way to do this, I think, is to take the first two components, which is, in this particular case, a, a one and a one, and I'm going to add those two together, and I'm going to add a two. And then I'm going to take the second pair of uh, numbers, which is a 2 and a 1, and I get a 3. And then I'm going to take the third pair of numbers, which is a 3 and a 1, and I'm going to get a 4, and, and so on. 4 plus 1 is 5, and 5 plus 1 is 6, and 6 plus 1 is 7. Something like that. So in other words, it's this sort of component-wise addition. The ith jth component of the first matrix plus the ith jth component of the second matrix, they get added together to form the ith jth component of the sum. But there's one really key detail to what we're doing here. Notice how this first matrix that we had is a 2 by 3 matrix, and that the second matrix that we have is a 2 by 3 matrix, and that the third matrix is a 2 by 3 matrix. That must be the case. Not that it needs to be 2 by 3. It could be any size, but it has to be the same size for every single one of them. Indeed, the only way it makes sense for us to try and go and add the, the same location in both matrices is if that both of the matrices have all the same locations, which is the same number of rows and the same number of columns. So be careful about that. In the same way that vector addition didn't make any sense if you had like a vector with two components added to a vector with five components, they had to, they had to match in their number of components. The same is here true. Both of these, scalar multiplication and matrix addition, both of these have analogs in just normal operations on numbers. But I'm going to give you a new operation, one that, that we haven't had a name before that we've seen since elementary school, the way we've, we've thought of multiplying by a number and, and adding numbers since elementary school. We just haven't thought of them in this larger construct. 
But this next one is not one we've had a lot of familiar with, and it is referred to as transpose. And here's the idea. I'm going to begin with that same matrix, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 matrix. And the way this operation works is I take the matrix and I put a T up on the top here, T for transpose. And the way that it is defined, I put my colon equals with the colon on the left, because that's what I'm defining. Now, the way this is defined is that every AIJ, so for example, this one right here is a second row first column, is that the, the I and the J, the two and the one here, they flip around. And that every AIJ goes to an AJI. So let's see how that's going to work. Well, the first component that I have here, this 1-1, one, one, is going to go to, well, A-1-1. One, one. If I flip the 1 and the 1, it's just going to go to A-1-1 one, one again. Nothing changes. Then I'm going to look at the A-1-2, which is 2, and it goes to the spot of A-2-1. So it comes down here. And so on like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the formal way that this is going to be defined is that AIJ is going to go to AJI. Now you might note that, that this transformation where it, it flips the location, so the same numbers but, but the locations flip, is that along this sort of main diagonal that I have here, that's the A11 and the A22, that that, that portion of it does not change. And then everything else sort of reflects over that main diagonal. It also means that if this initial matrix here that I have was going to be 2 by 3, then the, the output matrix has three rows and two columns. Indeed, the whole idea of transposition is just that the, the notion of a row and the notion of a column, that those roles interchange, and that what was a row is now a column, and what was a column is now going to be a row. So these are three different operations. By the way, let's think back down to just ordinary numbers like we've seen for a large number of years. So a number, if you think about it, is just kind of like a one by one matrix. Like, like the number seven and the number seven where I just put brackets around it to denote that it's a matrix is sort of really containing the same set of information. And then if I think about numbers as just one by one matrices, then the transpose of a number, because it's just one row and one column, it just it goes to itself. It's on that main diagonal. And so there really was transposition down in, in normal numbers. We just never talked about it because it didn't do anything. Scalar multiplication and, and addition, that those did do something just for normal numbers. But transposition, it was there. We just sort of hid it from you because there was no point in talking about it until we talked about matrices. And now transposition actually meaningfully does something. We've got more than one row and more than one column. Switching the role of rows and columns in that case is more important.